This guy, a regular on the show, now lives here in Austin, Texas. High level black belt, Second City master improviser. Once he got diagnosed with ALS, became a stand-up comedian, knocked it off his bucket list. We fell in love with him, made him a regular immediately. Now he has the tough task of writing and performing a brand new minute every single week on this show. Everybody else you saw tonight has been preparing for months and this and that. This guy has to do it every week, and he does it every week. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the great, the powerful Michael Lehrer, everyone. Here we go. This is how you close a show here in Austin, Texas. Thunder and lightning. <laughs> Guys, make some fucking noise for Michael Lair. Michael Lair, everybody. Uh, all right. For those of you that missed last week, uh, we found out that Michael Lair has been on a three-week cocaine bender, and uh, it appears as if though the effects are really starting to show. Um, Michael, uh, what's up? <laughs> um, I'm dying quickly in the town that most right than any other town I've ever lived in. He's dying quickly in a town that's the most ratchet than any other town he's ever lived in. Right. That's right. Right, like, I am, I live a corner mile away from this menu, and I try to Take my hand, and it was like Indiana Jones and the last cocaine. <laughs> okay, Michael. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It was Indiana Jones and the last cocaine? Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah. He lives a quarter mile from here. He t drove here in his wheelchair, and it was like Indiana Jones and the last cocaine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when we understand it, it's quite incredible what uh, comes out, what, what he, what's going on in that brain of his. Yeah. Yeah. I'm losing the ability to use my arms. And I'm like, I get up here every week and I give it my own. But a lot of people think that means I'm getting better when I'm not. So, Fuck you. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. There's a little button on that one right there, huh? <laughs> yeah, ALS yeah. is a uh, tremendous disease, but just to let people know, I don't force Michael to do this. He wants to do it. Uh, for those of you wondering, he says that this is the highlight of his life and that he loves doing it every no, single week. No, we're person. <laughs> when me and Tony and Redman were in Miami. When we went to Miami. Yeah, <laughs> and um, 
On the last day of the five shows, I was burned out and turned his like, How are you? You sound worse than you do after the show. I'm like, Give me that motherfucking microphone. <laughs> and he goes, Yo, I can give it and I can take it. I go, no doubt. And I'm getting sick enough where after KT500, I don't know how many shows I am left. But Austin, I love you and your ration is wrong. <laughs> and I've never been to a city so fucked up as Austin. Let me, let me know. It is true. Your disease has progressed a thousand miles an hour since moving to Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the central on um, multiple party districts and I would like to call all Mars and clubs on 16 the staff infection. Ah. <laughs> Some good fucking local humor right there. No, no. But um, I'm having the time of my life too much, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> don't make that sad face. Oh, he's looking at his notes. I thought he was looking down sad. <laughs> Yo, hey. I know I feel you're knowing my minute, and my life is a nightmare. <laughs> like, no, I'm not fucking around anymore. Like, I get family and friends who are like, oh, you're traveling, you're doing these cool shows, but 99% on my life is a fucking nightmare. And I don't know how much I've left to give to y'all, but I will do it until I can't do it anymore. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I would like to say this. We're dealing with a vaccine shortage. I, crazy enough, have still not got it, but I, I make rules for people who should not get the vaccine. And I live on rainy street. And if you ever Pre-order a hamburger on Randy Street from the internet to line up with 200 people the next day for that hamburger, you do not get the vaccine. <laughs> Michael... Lair, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, doing it. Doing it. Can we improvise? What? Can we improvise? You want to improvise something? Yeah. What do you want to improvise? Anyone with anything. Anyone with anything. It's my wheelhouse. Okay. Ron White, will you improvise with me? He wants to improvise with you, Ron. Sure. Hell yeah. So what? Uh, some more, yeah. What's the scene? Let's get a 
Sometimes I'm on my end. Let's get a suggestion from the audience here. Anything uh, Anything you guys want to... Travel to the moon. Travel to the moon. Um, yeah. Hey, Ron. <laughs> really cool accommodations in the moon. Am I right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's one of the nicest Airbnbs on the moon, and I'm glad you could make right. it out here. I How did you get up here today? One, I'm as surprised as you, because I have a 2.7 rating on Airbnb. <laughs> like, literally every Airbnb I've ever taken now, I've turned into a a brothel. <laughs> well, you know, I love brothels and I love rental units. Right. So I think you and I could do some business sometime up here in the moon. No doubt. I think we could spread your brand up to the moon. No doubt. No, Ron, I heard you tell this story one time. And hey, correct me if I'm wrong. You're a legend. And, but, um, you, um, Served in the military, correct? Yes, I did. And wasn't it through documentaries decades later that you realized that the blowjobs you were getting were from lady boys? <laughs> I think about 150 men sucked my dick while I was in Hawaii. If that's, if that's the story that you're getting to, I think it was about 150. I don't, I don't know what the record is, but I know that I was, I was right on up there. Philippines is a weird place. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I shame my head so I can lie about having cancer too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm dying really fucking fine. I don't know because I've, I've actually watched your condition improve over the last 10 minutes. So uh, it's actually pretty wild. You're, you're actually the only person tonight that I've watched get healthier as their set went on. So it's pretty ironic that you're the one dying. Michael, we absolutely fucking love you. We're going to end tonight's episode. How about a perform? How about the improvisation talents of Michael, Michael Lehrer? You are Shut up! Woo! Shut up! All you women act like you want a funny guy until you find out I can't walk. You know how large a lady has to be to maneuver me around the queen size mattress for intercourse? 285 pounds. Medicaid has a formula. You women act like you want a funny guy. Women also want to occasionally go to the beach. I have nightmares about sin. I have nightmares about sin. And there was a movie title for me trying to fuck a morbidly obese woman. It would be called Indiana Jones and the Last Cocaine. <laughs> I moved you to be a celebrity and you go to ice white shop parties, but people do not invite you to orgies when you have barbecue sauce on all your clothes. <laughs> Fuck you, Yoni. Fuck you, Yoni. Fuck Yoni. Fuck you, Yoni. Wow. <laughs>
Wow. Wow. One minute and 51 seconds. You give this guy a week off, he doesn't even take a break. Yes. Michael Lair is back, doing twice as long as uh, every other comedian, four times longer than one of the comedians tonight. <laughs> An incredible set. He just He's fresh off of uh, being uh, clean from the coronavirus. Where's Vagina? Where's Vagina Hyena? Where's <laughs> vagina, vagina Hyena? Hiding. Oh. Vagina Hyena. I saw him magistrate. God took my walking away. <laughs> I love you, Vagina Hyena. Wow. <laughs> Gina Hyena getting callback uh, power from Michael Lehrer. By the way, Michael, I think uh, anyone that saw last episode, everyone was very concerned and very yeah. worried because you really made almost uh, everyone cry. In yeah. The audience. But here's the truth. I wasn't sick. I'm an alcoholic drug addict. <laughs> That's true. So, but the coronavirus. Falls yeah. to the wall. Yeah. So I apologize, and I'll return all the GoFundMe. <laughs> all right. All right. But look, no more cocaine for me, all right? Yeah. But, but they have a new thing I want to try called double cocaine. <laughs> Wait, what's Wait it called? Wait a second. What's double cocaine? Um, it's like, you know how cocaine makes me on top of the world? Yeah. Double cocaine. I can fuck too. <laughs> oh, so it's Viagra with cocaine? Yeah. Oh, wow. that seems very healthy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, um, man. I've enjoyed my sobriety. It's been very fun. I picked up hobbies, like instead of bird watching, I do hooker hunting. Mm. Now, this is great when you're in a restaurant, we're always curious, like, oh, is that a hooker? There's an easy way to tell. Does she order off the menu like she's hibernating for the winter? <laughs> Does she order off the menu like she's a gerbil or a hamster and has pouches to store food in her cheeks. Yeah. And when does she order double bacon, extra sauces, and double hash browns at IHOP? That bitch is a hooker. Wow. Uh, very interesting. I can't believe we just found out Red Band's a I'm hooker. I'm a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Red Band's a hooker. What's funny is that, that, that anytime we're out of town, I always order extra food for the hotel room. Like, that's my backup chicken sandwich. Yeah. That's like, you know, because you never he know. He famously does. He gets a backup Frosty from Wendy's, and it'll be uh, in his fridge. So many hotel uh, maids have heard of very depressing Sunday afternoon cleaning up his backup food from a uh, from a refrigerator. I'm just kidding. He no, eats it before the maids yes. can get it. <laughs> Michael Lehrer. I'm well, not happy. <laughs> why aren't you happy? Good. I moved to Austin so I can fucking do drugs and it turns out like it no matter how cute and funny you are. A girl that the fuck a really fat guy and then they got in the winter. <laughs> I've never seen you laugh at yourself after a joke like that before. I've watched you hundreds of times at this point and I've never seen you enjoy a joke that much. Are you talking to someone specifically? Yeah! Orson! <laughs> Austin, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you made me your phone numbers. You don't plan on calling back. I can't, I can't work. You don't get my jokes, all right? I, you know what? I lie to people now. When people go, what do you do? I don't say community because... 
Then you hear a million annoying things. I go, Special Olympics, <laughs> bronze medal, cock and balls, <laughs> North Korea 2055. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, after a week off due to the coronavirus and a rough Why week that? of that, by the way, Tony, I, I just want to say that, you know, Michael Lair, before we got Yellow Rose and Red Rose as a sponsor, yeah. went to the Yellow Rose. Yeah, and he this sent, was on February 13th, yeah, by and, the way. And he sent us a text message. Yep. And his text message is, seriously, I quit everything, y'all. Worked for, <laughs> because Yellow Rose is all I've ever wanted. <laughs> by Felicia. Yeah. Yeah, he literally told us he was retiring because he went to the Yellow Rose. I don't know. I guess he was just planning on spending the rest of his money there. Again, this is definitely during the uh, months-long cocaine bender that he went on. Again, again, he retired from doing what he loves to stay at the Yellow Rose at one point. He sent us this... He sent us this at what, what time? What time was By that? By the way, then he said this. <laughs> Fuck, oh. I just realized I pissed all over myself in a stall <laughs> at, the, at the Yellow Rose. <laughs> I ruined everything nice. <laughs> wow. These are real text messages from Michael Lair. I ruined Oh, man. I'll need a bear car. Michael Lair is back, everybody! Hey. The West Coast has something to say. Yeah, baby. Fucking Austin is not a music city. Austin is a food city. But musicians are like scavengers with craft services. So we make the best food, the musicians will stay. But what you don't know is you're so good at food, but you're fucking cunts about everything else. <laughs> All right? Get off your fucking high horse. The musicians are only here because your food is so fucking good, huh? <laughs> My bougie Cali ass is calling out all the real customer service, all right? Yeah, Austin does not export rock and roll. Austin exports gout, all right? <laughs> Yeah, that's why everyone is such a fucking asshole. You're walking around on shattered glass from the fucking gout, from the three-week marinade barbecue that is fucking up your fucking foot. I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm running... On notice that the West Coast has something to say and that bangers on rainy stream. Alright, just because you serve bratwurst doesn't mean you should treat your customers like they're at a concentration camp. Alright? I agree. Uh, fuck you and your ten other hot dogs. Get off your fucking cunt horse. I could not agree with you more. I agree with everything he said. 100% of everything. The food runs the city. For those of you that just haven't been Seriously. here and don't know, the food really runs this city. And I agree with everything, especially 
the fact that Bangers is the most overrated place in the entire city. I would like to let Man. you know. That what is it? I agree bangers? with you. It's no. a place called Bangers. They serve uh, dirty hot dogs and have horrible customer service. <laughs> yeah. they were the only bad customer service, the only place that's blacklisted by me. I tell no. everybody. Really? I, I go, if you want to be my friend, you just got to make me one promise. You're not allowed to go to Bangers. Oh, I wow. blacklist restaurants every day. I cancel restaurants like SJW motherfuckers cancel comedians. <laughs> I, I'm not playing. Like, I'm here to eat and do comedy. And, like, you're assholes, right? <laughs> like, how about we're in a club? There's a hundred people ask us, but no, I can't have a paper menu because of COVID. <laughs> I, fuck you. I don't want to scan a menu and go into the matrix. <laughs> I, I want to order a fucking food and beer. Your food is good. But you're okay, the worst people in America. <laughs> wow. Why? What, what about the people exactly? What is it? What, what do you think? Uh, what do you? What, what is it about them? The Austin. Well, people? I have an answer for every question. <laughs> I don't say shit arbitrarily. So to answer your question, regionally in America is very different, and I. I'm 42, so I got to live in a lot of places. And here, they're so good at food. <laughs> they're like, we can be assholes about everything else. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. They they don't realize. Like it's like they try to they try to they try to push other things on the transplants, I think. Like people are like, well oh, wait till you go swimming in Barton Springs and I'm like, oh I get to get in the same giant pool with you and a bunch of people sweating out banger right. sweat. No thank right. you. I'm going right. to one of my new thirty favorite restaurants. Exactly. And Food goes a long way. Yeah. So it's real good, you know, but like, I don't know, like, food isn't everything. Right. And I'm here to eat delicious food. It's true. I mean, people don't realize everybody's here for the food. Like, if someone wanted to do a terrorist attack on Austin, they could just replace the salt with sugar and fuck up the whole city's uh, tourism (laughs) for a week. Yeah, going. Where's my sodium levels at? (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. When we defunded the police here, we took away the option from switching from savory to sweet. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) you all fuck. You all fuck, you criminals. (laughs) But I'm here, and I'm here to be. Tony, yeah, man, talk. Yeah, absolutely. I just decided right then when you were in the middle of that sentence, I'm going to let you talk. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, I've turned a threshold. You know, like, we just had killed 2,500. And before that, both I bought them out with cocaine and I got corn. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> he, he really, really, the bottoming out from <laughs> cocaine, I really just think that they just tested positive for corona, but I think it was mostly the cocaine. <laughs> I think he, it truly snorted the coronavirus at one point off a mirror. The, no doubt. <laughs> no. But I'm here. No I am here on the worst... Biggest open mic. I bet 50 to 200,000 people hear what I have to say every fucking week. How fucking nuts is that? And like, but no, I mean, fuck your applause. I like to the rest of y'all, fucking batter up. Bring that shit. Like, everyone talks to me like I got 
what I have because of my disease and not just spotting. I'm in the fucking lab all day, every day, while you're bitching and moaning. And I'm getting better and better. Wow. And so, you want to fuck with me? We're here every Monday. The West Coast got something new. What is it? What do you keep referencing? Is this a new branding? Uh, yeah. Is this, you're, doing, you're planting uh, some seeds for some I'm real like, branding? Yeah. The West Coast has something to say because... You started your set by saying that, and then you went in immediately into something totally different. And I'm yeah. like, wow, this is some real. Yeah, the West Coast. Yeah, <laughs> but you're not that. you're not the West Coast anymore. You're originally I... from upstate New York, and then <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> What's up, son? Look at my outfit. I'm Cali, baby. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. You bought that at Ross in Indiana. <laughs> I bought that in Oakley and Oakley. You look like Stephen Hawking's at the X Games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he's like Tony Hawking. Teamwork. <laughs> Norman and Hinchcliffe, 2024. Yeah. By the way, he sounds like he has no roof of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite parts of watching Michael up here doing an extension Ended set for the third time in a row. Two minutes and 20 seconds, breaking well, a previously held record. For you can't walk him. <laughs> Two and a half minutes, and then followed up by seven minutes of a killer mm. interview. And my favorite part of it is the whole time, from my viewpoint, is in the lit up uh, staircase. I can see uh, the first regular that you saw, William Montgomery, literally mouthing apologies to me about his performance to start the show. So. Some of the fun things that I yeah. get to see that in which I'm trying not to laugh and pay attention to the show. But that's it's just William lit up in the back going, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hilarious. Michael just owning it. You would think William was the one with a disease that's going to kill him in months to years. Well, I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> Nobody laughed at that. That made it weird. <laughs> he it knows he's going to... All right. I'm... Uh, I, Look, like, if I wasn't diseased, if I wasn't on disability, if I didn't, like, go through a million cities and end up in L.A. in the bucket, I want to be here right now. My weakness is my strength, my disease is your cure. Wow. The West Coast does have something to say. West Coast has something to say. Holy shit. That the West Coast. I'm guessing we're going to see a new t-shirt released by Michael Lair this week. That's my guess. Guys, how loud can this place get for the fucking... Great. Michael Lair, everybody. Famously uh, beat the entire system of comedy over its second city over two decades of experience. At uh, yeah, yeah, do it. Um, at Second City, got diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and decided to chase his dream of being a stand-up comedian. Was a regular on this show immediately uh, after that. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the great and powerful Michael Lehrer. Everyone, here he is. Always exciting. Always a brand new minute from Michael. Uh, absolute crowd favorite here. And Austin resident. Here he is, everybody. Michael Lair, everyone. Come on. Your final comedian of the night. Texan, you'll be fucking with me too much. I'm learning... Takes Mex Kung Fu. It's called Topo Tico. <laughs> it means be like water or Hasu Gusa Agua Pinta Mari Con Caliente. Mi amo Miguel, como se llama Caliente. <laughs> fucking Austin, fucking. Defines the police, but the sidewalks look like earthquake art. 
on behalf of the entire disabled community, so our news takes awesome. My doctor is like, oh, you can take your pills with applesauce. Yeah, every 40-year-old guy likes to hear that. Can I eat my pills with pussy? Can I punch them up and snort them out of a lady boy's asshole? There it is, Michael Lair, everybody. Absolute shredding up here. Great set, my friend. Yeah, I told you. Tony was bullying me before <laughs> the show. He was trying to get in my head like he always does. And he's like, what did you drink today? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> and he's like, tell me, tell me. Trying to fuck with me. And then I come and I crush. So fuck you, Tony. Wow. <laughs> well... Just for the record, I love that. It's the first time he first time he's mentioned that, but uh, let the record show that he said I do it all the time and he always kills. So maybe I'm doing something right. Yeah. How do you? What do you think? Phil Jackson had to coach Michael Jordan, my friend. Yeah, but at least. And Michael Jordan wasn't in a fucking wheelchair, by the way. Yeah, but Phil Jackson gave all these players books. And you never give a shit. <laughs> Does Tony ever hit you like on the legs with like bamboo yeah, sticks or anything? I like do. I have, I have, I, for real? I have a for real? I have a yardstick that I use on Michael. Oh, a yardstick. That was yeah. my mom's weapon growing up. It Fuck used to be a ruler, but then the yeah. COVID, six feet or whatever. For real? It's so stupid. <laughs> it's literally three feet long. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> but Tony, Tony helped me out. And he cut my nose hairs. I did. I, I trimmed I, Michael's yeah. nose hairs this Seriously? week. Absolutely. We were having <laughs> coffee together, and uh, he laughed at one point and tilted his head back. And my, my mind was completely blown to see that he had oh. the fucking Sherwood Forest through his fucking nostrils. I'm like, you need wow, a this guy. I'm like, this is the most handicapped part about you, Michael. We need to take care of this. No. And I did. I, I used my Manscaped uh, nose trimmer, yeah. and that thing was fucking working overtime. Yeah. <laughs> we got it done. Yeah. I swear to God, I've never seen nose hairs in my life like I cleaned out of this I fucking know. guy's skull. And they're like, um, um, still wool. That's where I get my heart from. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> I love it. You tried to make me look like a bad guy in the beginning of this interview, and then you accidentally admitted that I trimmed your nose hairs this week. <laughs> a real asshole move. <laughs> hey, I have an announcement. Oh, he has an announcement. Yeah, um, since all the strange pussy dried up for me in Austin, I'm getting back together with my nurse. Hey, oh, look at that, everybody. The yeah. famous nurse slash girlfriend, Colette, is moving to Austin. Yeah. You Could know what? Some Life is chaotic, and sometimes you have to be with an old white lady with good credit. That's right. That's right. The thunderstorm is coming. Absolutely. <laughs> Colette is coming to... Rain you in a little bit, right? Oh, no, fuck that bitch. <laughs> she's, a, she's actually a good woman. Like, she's like, a great like, like woman. I was really sad when you moved here without her, and she's always been a, such a sweetheart and a helper for you. Yeah, but I was promised anal. She won't give you anal? No. Well, you need to I know. get her drunk. There you I go. I know, I'm working on it. There you go. Red Band's, is, Red Band's advice is to rape her butthole, everybody. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, Tim, you've seen Michael before. He's the best. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Tim. He deserves anal. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he does. Uh, thank you. And this city should, I'm pretty sure if you walk right out on the street, you can get fucked in the ass here yeah. within 25 minutes. You say that. And I moved here. Literally to get laid until I die. And the wheelchair is a deal breaker. I'm cute and funny. 
I used to get fucked all the time. It's a wheelchair. Yeah. I, I know a I know a midget lady in a wheelchair that's literally a sex that's addict. That's right. I could hook you two up. You guys could go roll around fucking like Mario Kart. Yeah. Like Princess and Toad out there. Just Men are disgusting. That midget lady in a wheelchair gets fucked by 12 black hawks a night, all right? Wait, how do you know this? Um... TikTok. <laughs> okay, Red Band, really, again, I mean, just really, really dialed in tonight. No better, no better time for a fart noise than on Hey, TikTok. I get to use one. I, there you uh, go. I guess so. We've really been saving it for that moment. Yep. Uh, Michael, what else? Anything else before we go? Um, no. There it is. Michael Lair, Woo! everybody. MichaelLairComedy.com. He fully recovered from his uh, March cocaine bender. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new and improved Michael Lair, everybody! Stop, stop telling me how cool my wheelchair is. That's like saying you look sexy on dialysis. Or your skin glows while you're on chemo. This is not a wheelchair. It's a bird scooter for the damned. You try plugging your legs in. You try plugging your legs in every 12 hours. I go to restaurants. I demand a discount for bringing my own chair. Strip clubs. Strip clubs give me a discount on lap dances, but they charge me a maintenance fee for jizzing all over the place. My cock is like a fire extinguisher. The National Guard using my cock to put out forest fires. Smokey the Bear gave my cock the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Wow. Michael Lair. Absolutely incredible. I almost forgot what punchlines were like after uh, the three female comedians were up here uh, back to back to back. That was like, you did, you did so many, there were so many jokes there. That was like having 71 female comedians on stage at once. Oh, you're being generous. That was incredible. My goodness, just joke after joke after joke after joke with actual uh, audible, very, very funny punchlines. Well, Lair. I have a lot of free time. <laughs> so do they. I promise you, so yeah. do they. That's, that's not an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Welcome, Michael. I've been having a great day, ruined now by fucking Chester the, the pussy molester <laughs> over here. <laughs> Holtzman and Michael Lair have a very interesting rivalry. These two hate each other for some reason. Fucking pederas. <laughs> Dude, his mustache smelled like little boy butt. <laughs> oh my I, God. I will beat your ass. <laughs> Dude, shouldn't he be selling a used car somewhere? <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, handicapped vans, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking lizard skin over here. <laughs> Fucking Hostman has a record for most drunk cleaning done to close board at Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Michael Lair absolutely up here shredding, wearing a, a new tiger outfit. Look yeah. at this. Get up. I mean, you are just a fucking rock star, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. Well, you gave me the platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got it on Amazon. <laughs> Not the website in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> that explains all the tigers. I get it. Love it. Fucking. Oh, for the first time ever since I've been on Kill Tony. I like 
you, Tony, more than Red Man. Oh, really? <laughs> Why? What happened? Well, Red Man fucking bumped me from his show last week. Oh, you bumped him off the secret show. It takes that very seriously. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know what? So, so uh, we had 12, t- uh, 18 comics on the last show, and you know yeah. sometimes it's like, hey man, I got too many people on this show. Yeah, the so question: I mean, Michael Lair has been on every. Uh, you've been on every episode, or every show since then. Yeah, I'm by so. Well, I guess you don't want to be on this week, motherfucker. Okay, okay. red red band is. Uh, um, but any time. of those other comics. Does it take them three and a half hours to get dressed? Oh, good question. He did. He's uh, Red Band seems genuinely mad. Mind you, he is for Jack Daniels in right now. I don't think he's taking these like jokes at all. <laughs> no, I mean, look, Michael, uh, I try to give everyone as many spots as possible. Sometimes I don't have, he's, he's like, I, I, I overbook it, all right? So you got to be like, hey, I, uh, thank you for giving me 14 spots since I've been here. I can take a week off. You don't have to be a little bitch about it. Oh. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, I agree with Red Band. Right. <laughs> Michael, what are you... You're like the fucking swamp thing. You are Red Band. Fair. Oh. <laughs> Red Band playing the sounds of Michael's wheelchair. This is getting personal no, right you, now. You don't want to be getting on an airplane when this fucking guy is on the same flight. Yeah, and why they phone me up and put me in the overhead of compartment? Michael fucking Lair. What a force. What a force. Yeah, man. That was a good one today. Yeah, it was. Today felt like a hearty meal. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of highlights. I mean, who could forget the guy asking for one of the coolest jobs ever imagined? Just basically because he did a few fundraiser bartending gigs, which anybody that's ever bartended knows that is the absolute entry, entry, entry level of bartending. Right. Fundraising usually gives you like uh, maybe two, maybe a red wine and a white wine to pour in a fucking glass. Uh, and uh, so true, famously Tony. cans of beer. Like it's like I would say either beer or wine. There's no real mixing of alcohols or anything yeah, like 100%. that. Really, but like he swears up and down, according to him, dozens of fundraisers, which could be up to two dozen fundraisers. That's 24 for those of you that... All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Matthew McConaughey is like, you know what? This is a great beer. You did a great job, bartender. You deserve whatever bartending job your wildest dreams can fucking... <laughs> I love it. And then, of course, we had a triple threat female comedian uh, face-off where we... That was awesome. It Maybe really we could was. do that like every week, just have three females Maybe like, go off. Maybe not. <laughs> wow, the red band, the king of bad ideas, ladies and gentlemen. It's incredible. Really, and if you want bad ideas, uh, email redband at redband.com. Uh Michael Lair, I mean, you are just a fucking... The word cherry has been used a lot tonight, and I'll use it again. You are the cherry on top of a fucking very fun episode of Kill Tony. You know how to bring this thing home better than anybody. How loud can this place get for the great Michael Lair? Being disabled, I scrapbook and craft so much joy and fabrics. This is my sad bitch. <laughs> we fuck on all the yarn. I made a string of anal beads that spelled out her name. She made me a Christmas wreath I wear as a cock ring. <laughs> we, we get abortions just because Hubba Dhabi is the competition. <laughs> She thinks I'm such a good lover. She got me my own craft store. It's called Michael's, the place for crafts. <laughs> we have orgies in the scrapbook section. And then we scrapbook our favorite memories from that orgy. Uh, 
Unbelievable. The consistency of this man is absolutely unbelievable. Michael fucking Lair. Every single episode closing it out strong. Peg, I I had another minute that was a little edgier tonight. You guys want to hear another minute from Michael Lair? This fucking guy. The only guy, the first regular to move here. Remember, David Lucas only comes, you know, every uh, two, three. You know, he's here He's here like 70% of the time. William's here about 20% of the time. Michael Lair was one of the first comedians from Los Angeles to move to Austin, Texas. Does a new minute every single week. The and goes here had something to say. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying... <laughs> And writes and performs a brand new minute of, of a completely, insanely original material every single week. And he's been going long, and now we're finding out that he has another new minute. Ladies and gentlemen, this is another new minute from Michael motherfucking Lair. Yeah! Yeah, how are you, Texas? I'm a proud new resident of Texas. Where H was invented. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the story, there's a movie called Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> All right, and the lead character, his name is Dallas, and he likes to party and got high so much, he lets one of his buddies pump his asshole full of AIDS. Now, I like to get wet. I like to get crunk. I like to kiss the sky. But I've never gotten so high when I let one of my buddies pump my asshole full of AIDS. And I don't know. I'm just a Jew from New York. It must be the cowboy way. Wow. Jesus Christ. I mean, what the fuck? It's getting a standing ovation from the front part of the, from the sitting part of the audience. <laughs> he lives for this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he won't be stopped is what he's screaming incoherently. <laughs> Not into the microphone at all. He's done enough into the microphone tonight. This guy comes with a second minute, better than his first minute, which was the best minute of the episode. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Why doesn't everyone perform like they have months to years to live? (laughs) I mean, this is the real fucking deal, everybody. Look at that mustache he's growing. It awesome. Is. Yeah, that is I fucking thick and girthy. This guy's about to be our new barbecue guy if he keeps <laughs> this up. <laughs> By the way, just a little fun fact for anybody who uh, hasn't been paying attention. Dave Eubanks got beaten so badly in b- <laughs> bass and drums that we actually decided to replace the white keyboard player with John D's. everybody. Uh, he got beaten so badly. The resident keyboard player, John D's is back. D's on keys. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Uh, Michael, you are unfucking believably talented. I say it every Thank week, you. but I mean, this is wild. Thank you. Man, it, it's cool to get to start over because those first few words, I don't know how they're going to sound when they come out of my mouth. Like right now, I'm clear. So when I begin, so disheartening when I can't speak clear. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, just fucked. But, um, <laughs> you know, to get a warm up and now to be able to speak and do that thing. Uh, really yeah, like I know how you feel. I, I, I'm telling you, I play drums so much better before the audience comes in. <laughs> I mean, I know exactly how you feel. Well, a few weeks ago, Michael, right before you got COVID, you had that one episode where you could barely speak, yeah. and then it was very it, like discer- discerning to all of us. And uh, concerning, concerning is the word that the Red word Man I was looking for. That. Red well, Man can't speak. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, Michael the, speaks better. Well, than hey, Red I, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> truthfully, the word is cocaine. Yeah, it really that's is. That's what happened that night. 
All what right. I what I love about that is that um, we do indeed pre-tape the show for those people that watch it on YouTube. Uh, and, uh, you know, a wild thing about that episode, Michael was on a cocaine bender. He was on a big alcohol bender. Jeez. I mean, no regrets. Yeah, <laughs> a- absolutely. People in Austin agree with you. All these filthy cokeheads over here uh, absolutely agree with no you. No regrets. Um, but one of the fun facts that I'm getting to is that, you know, when that episode came out of Michael's, uh, Michael had a really rough night one night. I mean, absolute rock bottom tank top. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, but we had already taped episode 500. Uh, My- Michael had COVID that week of his, Jesus. not only was he at the end of a cocaine bender, at the end of an alcohol bender, but he also got the coronavirus. Uh, two hospital visits in one day later. I mean, he got the fucking Donald Trump drip and everything Fuck. to repair himself. And, uh, you know, so we knew that he was better. We, he came back for 500 and made his killer return to standing ovations and with his son got to murder on stage. And, uh, and it's just wild. You want to talk about a fucking comeback for someone. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it until this run of Michael Lair as of late. And uh, it just reminds me of how talented I am for bringing someone like this on the show <laughs> and making them such a permanent part. You see thousands of people. How do you pick? How do you know? Hey, William seems funny. David seems funny, but how do you make the decisions? I do that with my brain. And <laughs> it's just incredible how right you make me feel, Michael. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, <laughs> you know, I talk about a lot, but, you know, I got back into the comedy after three years off, and I was an open micer again, and then I got hooked up to this rocket ship, and that's why I work so hard. You hooked yourself up to it, dude. I'm always looking for someone that is so intriguing and compelling that I want to talk to them once a week and listen to a minute of theirs once a week. And so it's not something that uh, you got hooked up with. You hooked yourself up to it. You had the you had the uh, utensils to do that, and you did it. And it makes me so fucking happy. I'm such a big fan. Thank you so much. Another new minute from Michael Lair and back two of them. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Vape thing. He's the one Future the truth teller. For those of you that Vape have been thing. to the show before, Future you truth know what teller. you're in for right now. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Real monster. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Come on, guys, make some fucking noise for Michael Vape Lair. Thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Vape thing. Future truth teller. Taxi cabs return. After Uber drivers grow tired of strangers farting in their cars. Future truth teller. So many Californians move to Texas. Being homo becomes Texas' favorite new pastime. Future truth teller. World hunger is solved after COVID kills so many people, leaving so much leftover chicken in the fridge. Future truth teller. Mexican cartels kidnap Joe Rogan and force him to interview the ghost of Selena and propel and propel and propel conspiracy theories that the Alamo was a false flag event future truth teller as artificial intelligence rules the world Dana White studs out the entire UFC roster creating a militia of mixed race mixed martial arts machine marauders future truth teller turns out the biggest threat to white people was not the identity politics of the Democratic Party, but in fact, ranch dressing. Future truth teller. Elon Musk cures all cancers but anal but anal but anal because he's just funny like that. Future truth teller. Wow. The 
brand new minute from Vape Thing, Future Truth Teller. We've seen this before. Always a special treat to have Vape Thing here. Vape Thing, how you doing? I'm freaking the fuck out, Tony. I have a fucking felony on my fucking face. I can't, I can't, I can't catch another case. <laughs> wow, okay, that's an interesting answer. Uh, how's, uh, how's things been since the last time we saw you? Everyone in here has guns. Will someone just put me out of my fucking misery? Absolutely incredible. It doesn't even look like your mouth is moving when you answer these questions. It's incredible. How do you do what you do, vape thing? Let the blind guy do it. He deserves as much. Oh, wow. It's really Michael Lair, everybody. This is incredible. It's the real man, Michael Lair, under there. Famously, the man behind Vape Thing. Do you have lipstick on? <laughs> yeah, I asked, I asked my nurse for a chapstick, but she wasn't wearing her glasses. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> This guy gets it, man. The things you do for comedy, it's incredible. <laughs> Michael, what's happening? Well, um, everything's wonderful. Hey, Texas, we just passed a constitutional carry law so all of us can carry handguns without a permit, without a license. Just call me Butterfingers. I love it. Last time you had a gun, famously, there was a BB gun incident in a backyard that... Uh, yeah. In Maryland, I, I believe. I saw my spine out. <laughs> Michael, welcome to the show. You're here with the great Russell Peters and Ron White. Pleasure, honor, thank you. You guys have seen Michael before, correct? He's been absolutely killing it out yeah, here every yeah. week. Actually, Tony, last time Ron White was on was when uh, Michael was at his all-time low. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, Michael, Michael was on a lot of that stuff that Kaylee's into, if you know what I mean. Uh, I believe one of the comics took his parking spot tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, there are at least one other disabled person in here, in here tonight, and I fucking hate that. <laughs> All right? It makes it so awkward. And like everyone's like, it's like the elephant in the room, and then when we see each other, it's like in the film when someone time travels and. They go in, they run into their past or future self and it causes a hiccup in time. It's, it's yeah, awkward like that. Yeah. The elephant from the elephant in a room reference a minute. Has, has, uh, did, that, did the other person that in a wheelchair or... or person uh, talk to you yeah. at all like did you No, I saw them coming out of a bus and they looked like they also had a neurological disorder like me and so begum hell yeah absolutely <laughs> the neurological disorder there so was a guy also sitting on a patio chair and I can't tell if he's disabled or just fucking fat. Yeah. Yeah, it could just be a lazy, a lazy yeah. man. Yeah. But everything's good, man. Like, I'm having the time of my life in Austin. And being sick, yeah, Austin. He is. I promise you this. 
We live very, 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 very ridiculously close to one another, and uh, basically, Michael is a staple in our little neighborhood. He's constantly out on the sidewalks of uh, of Rainy Street. Yeah, Rainy Street. I'm the Rainy Street rude boy. <laughs> He really, he really does. He ru- he runs those. I street. actually drove down Rainy Street today. Really? Yeah. You probably saw him. Yeah. He was probably driving right behind you. Uh, it's a very short street. Very yeah. Short street. Indeed. He rolls those streets. He doesn't run those streets. He rolls those streets. That's right. You know, famously, Michael, uh, the one who convinced us, uh, convinced me to move uh, near Rainy Street, is the great Ron White, who yeah. uh, showed it to me when we were uh, coming. Visiting here during a California lockdown, and my mind was completely blown to see how alive that fucking street was. Oh, yeah. Incredible. It's wonderful. Like, any given day, you can see a bridesmaid um, get a open head one on the bird scooter. (laughs) That is so true. Yeah. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Hilarious stuff, Michael. Anything else, Michael Lair? What are we missing here? Nothing. I gotta say, man, it's so good to see you doing way better because the last time I saw you, which is the first time I saw you, you were a shit fucking sandwich, dude. And <laughs> you are... But just to see your, 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 that it's not like that every day. So this is a way fucking better day, right? Yeah. You don't know, dude. Yeah. I what, mean, what? Real quick, real quick. Um, it's crazy because I've been working so hard this year with this show, and I moved out here, and um, I built up all this currency for being a hard worker and doing great comedy. And then the two OGs here, fucking Ron White and Joe Rogan, they both saw me on my absolute coked out rock bottom. <laughs> I started a fight with Joe Rogan. Oh shit. And You're now look it? at you. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty yeah. hilarious. He got into an argument with Joe Rogan in a green room and then at the end of it asked Joe if he this means he's not allowed to do his podcast anymore. <laughs> Which made the whole room really bust up and laugh. Yeah. Spotify vetoed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Michael, you're an absolute legend. How about a big hand for Michael Lair, everybody? Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, regular with a brand new killer minute every single week, I present to you the return of Michael Lehrer. Time is of the essence. Don't waste a minute of it. That's why when I serve the internet, I accept all cookies. (laughs) I will not have my web browsing experience thrown down by not accepting these computer cookies. I know I risk pop-ups. I will not live my life in fear of pop-ups. I know I risk identity theft. I'm 42 years old. I own nothing. I've been bankrupt twice. And I have a quick-moving Degenerative neurological disorder. (laughs) Stealing my identity would be like robbing a bank and having a dive pack explode in your getaway car. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I've learned never burn bridges. Because you never know who will have drugs 
when you want drugs. <laughs> Let me clarify. Never burn bridges because you never know who will have drugs when you need drugs. Michael motherfucking Lair. There it is. He's back. Still got it. I'm from New York, New York. The concrete jungle will inspire you. Sabara will hire you. Wow. I'm from New York. You, you, you all it just heard... sounds like the song in slow motion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you all heard of Jay Z. This is lazy. This motherfucker looks like a Pokemon come to life. <laughs> oh, Michael, I'm not gonna uh, fuck with you, dude. You're wearing all blue, so I can tell you're a crip. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and uh, yo, and I can tell your blood has diabetes. That's a crip and blood comeback. Very good stuff. Thank For those you. of you that lost track Thank there, you. I'll do. He has better muscle tone than me. I'll do Rogan style commentary on this if I have to. But Dominicana, oh. Guatemala. Why are you dressed like a Puerto Rican tourist in New York City? <laughs> if it wasn't for the bikes. This rap shit would not be going out soon. Tell me where you from. Uptown, baby. We get down, baby. Uptown, baby. We get down, baby. Hell yeah, yeah, nigga. Oh, shit. If John Dees agrees, that means you broke, like, the, yeah. you, you beat the video game of cool. The color berry. Uh, Michael Lair, when did you decide to go with the facial hair of NWO Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Well, I'm from, I'm from new, new, the new, new, new world order. <laughs> yo, oh. um, when his yo. legs dropped. <laughs> <laughs> if Michael I Lair. can, if I can be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If, if I can be serious for a second, yeah. Like totally, with your mascara my, beard, absolutely. Go right ahead. Be super serious. <laughs> my, I grew up in the melting pot of Flushing Queens, and I consider myself a Latin X. And if I learn anything from Latin X, like the famous comedian Paul Rodriguez, oh, who I believe his name is on the Comedy Store wall. Absolutely huge legend at the right. Comedy Store. And he once said, as I was a young town watching HBO like you did, yep. he once said, if it wasn't for Puerto Ricans, Americans wouldn't have cockroaches. <laughs> wow. Michael, why did you make eye contact with me while you said that? Do you think... Because he needs help stomping out his cockroaches. <laughs> Do you think I won't have uh, you canceled? Do you think you're above being canceled? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you, th you think getting canceled by Pang Dang is bad. He's getting canceled by God. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm lucky, before God cancel me, cocaine will cancel me. <laughs> uh, Michael's also coming to Skankfest this year. Absolutely, is. Yes. No doubt. If it wasn't, yes. if it wasn't for... If it wasn't for Michael being on Skankfest last year, we would have just done it, but we were like, no, dude, we're going to kill him. we got to respond yeah. this shit. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. Yeah, though I did get corona. 
He did good. And I ended up in the hospital twice. In the same but day. We don't, we don't die, we multiply. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, Nick. I always thought there was something a little gremlin-y about you. Michael Lair, unbelievable set. You definitely fucking did it again. What else are we missing here? Anything else you want to say? This is incredible. I always get a little nervous when we take a couple weeks off that uh, I'm like, fuck, what about Michael? You know, I would say this. Like, um, I would say since we left the comedy store, this is by far... The best episode of Cantoni. Like, and, and, like, these, these comics we pulled out the bucket tonight were fucking talent. What unique, original, creative ideas. They coupled that can just came up. They're like a Spanish Tom Segura and Christine. Yeah, Pena. they are. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's like instead of your mom's house, it's like your mom's house, your sister's house, your brother's house. Everybody lives together in that house. Your mom's casa? <laughs> yeah. This guy is an absolute fucking genius. Ladies and gentlemen, a very special treat. You've seen him on Kill Tony before. It's Injured Dice Clay, everybody. <laughs> We've seen Injured Dice Clay before. He's a legend on this show. One more time for Injured Dice Clay, everyone. Little, little Bo Peep lost her sheep to COVID complications. She was anti-mask and anti-vax, but now the bitch has no reservations. <laughs> dice, 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 Oh, oh, oh! Oh, Mother Hubbard ran to the cupboard to fetch a bottle of wine. But she already had two, so what that bitch do? She fell and broke her spine. Dice, 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 dice. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. But Humpty's job let their insurance expire. So now Humpty's wife is pussy for hire. Dice, 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 dice. Little boy blue, someone grab an EpiPen before this kid dies. Dice, 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 dice. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down. He had lead poisoning. <laughs> the hell was in Flint, Michigan. Dice, 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 dice. There was an old lady who lived in the shoe. Political discourse and divide prevented her from being relocated. <laughs> Can we get this bitch a boot? Dice, 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 dice. Hickory dickory dock. I sat on my cock. My boys too. So my nurse came through and I fucked every hole in the cracks. Yeah. Wow. Jesus Christ. Two minutes and 38 seconds. Everybody else trying their hardest to fill a minute with laughter. And here he is, bringing back to character injured Dice Clay, ladies what is and that gentlemen. Around Michael neck? Lair is here, showing oh. off his hand sanitizer for some oh. weird reason. No. 
<laughs> Stay sick, yo. <laughs> yo, let's hear it for our first responders, all right? Yeah. Oh, shit. All you second responders can suck my dick. You smell, motherfucker. Oh, I'm a responder, but I'm so fat. I wish I was the first responder. <laughs> Guys, the funniest comedian of the night almost every single show is literally dying. And he does it every single fucking week. I can't explain how hard it is. I can't explain to you. He doesn't need to do what he does. He did two and a half Kill Tony sets tonight for no reason other than to entertain you people. It doesn't even make any fucking sense. Yeah. What's up? Well, Mike? I have a lot of free time. <laughs> oh! 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 oh. oh. Wait, is he He's hurt? injured, Dice Clay. Oh, oh. That's why it makes sense. He's injured, Dice Clay. He's not Andrew Dice Clay. He's injured. Oh! <laughs> Those are owls, not O's. Oh! Wow. <laughs> My sciatica! <laughs> Yeah, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Oh, yeah, no. they fucked me. I gotta tell you guys, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna share a thought I just had with you. The episodes since we've been canceled have been so much more fun. Yeah. Than the episodes oh. than before. I don't know how to explain it. It's I, like I just found myself. I've been sitting up here cracking up all night. It's like we unlocked something. Yeah, we really did. I'd like to thank Pang Dang for this. Uh, it, <laughs> Pang, yeah. if you're watching Pang. here on camera one, really, I know that you thought you were going to get a boost from this, you fucking son of a bitch. But really, I mean, thank you from the bottom of my fucking heart. Anyway. Michael Lair, I don't know what to say, man. You did it again. What else? You got um, anything else to tell these yeah, people? Yeah, um... No, man, I'm, I, uh, my nurse said that if I don't drink before I perform, she'll give me $200. Okay. So I'm uh, ready to start fucking drinking. Yeah, Michael. Michael, if that's what it takes, then someone will always give you $200 yeah. to not drink. I didn't realize you were such a cheap date, but uh, but holy shit. I mean, you always do great, but goddamn, dude. You're fucking in it. You're supposed to be doing worse every week, by the way. I don't know if anyone told you this, but... That's true. Other than your doctors, <laughs> but maybe... But well, you know, um, I'm lucky that um, Medicaid covers five A's of cocaine.